Hey guys, today we show another restoration project I've been working on, and this video is for the Bob Moog Foundation who owns this awesome Moog Liberation. A huge thank you to the Bob Moog Foundation for giving me the opportunity to restore one of their instruments for them. It's been a real pleasure. And of course a lot of you guys know from my other videos that I'm actually kind of a Moog historian as well. Love the engineering aspect of these things and the engineers behind a lot of these products. Uh, Bob Moog's hugely important, uh, but there's other guys as well, such as you know Dave Luce, Jim Scott, Tony Marchese, Ray Castor, Rich Walborn, Chad Hunt, as well as a guy, I believe he was an engineer, and that's Don Bessaker, who worked in the uh, custom engineering lab back in the day. Um, these guys were all, you know, they basically were the guys that took Bob Moog's legacy of his circuitry design and then added their own flavor to them or you know would would work with Bob Moog to make products like the Liberation etc. So really interesting you know history on these things. I think the Liberation was actually more of a Tony Marchese uh, kind of design if I'm not mistaken. Of course all the engineers work together so you can't just rule out one person. They were all a team you know as far as coming up with this stuff. But uh, anyways, yeah, it's just a real honor to, to work uh, work on, on this instrument for the Bob Moog Foundation. But uh, this one, what I did to it is my typical stuff. I went through it, replaced all common failure components, uh, cleaned the chassis really good, replaced this chassis actually. Um, this one had uh, some, some pretty deep gouges in it, and then it also was missing this jack back here. And so they had hard wired this cord and taped it to the body. And of course, anytime you start peeling that tape, it takes off the, the finish. Um, unfortunately, the way these things were made back in the day, um, the finish is not very good on these things anyways. So when you start adding tape and you start peeling tape off and that kind of stuff, it usually ends up getting a little ugly. But uh, like I say, replace the chassis, uh, pulled the keys, clean the key contacts, wash the keys. Um, also repaired the aftertouch on this one. The aftertouch worked, but it was uneven across the keyboard, which just turned out to be some weak springs for the return bar. And uh, so did that. And uh, so yeah, got everything cleaned up, rebuilt the ribbon controller. So the ribbon controller is all nice and clean and fresh. I went to the power supply module, redid it. Now this jack here was replaced uh, in its past. So and they actually had uh, drilled the hole out bigger and used this cannon style jack, which is actually not a bad thing. The cannon jacks are, are pretty tough jacks. So I just left that because there's no really good way to repair that. But they did a really good job as far as installment. I actually took this apart and checked all the wiring inside as well. And, you know, really clean work. So whoever did that did a, a, a good job on it. Um, but yeah, anyways, it's just a really clean instrument. Uh, I'll just give you a walk around here so you guys can see it. Um, a lot of questions I get asked about the Liberation, I brought this up in, in a few places on Facebook and stuff, but I'm going to bring it up here as well. So, what is the Liberation? That's the question I get asked a whole lot. You know, is there is there an instrument it's kin to? Um, you know, what what is it? Well, what the Liberation is, guys, is it's actually a Moog Prodigy. Um, it's a Moog Prodigy with a mixture of a realistic concert mate mg1 believe it or not um, it's primarily prodigy now it's not like a multi moog or micro moog where they use the same board and they just you know add expansions for the multi moog it's a completely different circuit board layout it's a completely different uh, circuit board design and uh, so it's not like a, a, you can cross it straight over to a prodigy it's not that way it's its own thing but the oscillators, the filter, the uh, VCA, pretty much the whole audio path is a prodigy. And then what it has from the realistic is it has the polyphonic section that has been expanded with more dividers for the more octaves. So that's really what it is. You also get the ring modulation from the uh, from the actual MG1 as well because what they do is they use a phase lock loop uh, chip which is a, has a VCO in it and they use that VCO to drive the uh, top octave synthesizer chip for the polyphonic section. But inside that phase lock loop is an exclusive OR logic gate. And so they actually feed the two oscillators here into it and that gives you your ring modulation. So that's how they actually do the ring modulation. Um, layout, 
uh, looks like a rogue as far as this era of screen printing and all that. But the oscillators, once again, look like a realistic. They didn't use the single flip uh, toggles for octave and one flip toggle for waveform. Um, so you actually got more, you know, more variety on the on the Liberation. Um, just a just a fantastic instrument, and it looks really good. Now these things are heavy. That's the only drawback to it being a guitar is they are they are a little heavy, and about 25 minutes is all I've ever been able to really play one on my shoulder. Uh, but they're great for like stage appearance if you want to just get it out on stage and play a uh, you know a song with it. Fantastic. But they were definitely not uh, not light. But uh, anyways, I'll flip it up here so you guys can see the underside of it. And you can see just how clean everything looks. And just show you this is the all serial number. It's three two seven eight. And uh, you know just gave it a good clean. There's still a little tape residue. I could not get off this bottom chassis. You can see it right there. A little marking right there where it had some tape across right here. Um, I've scrubbed that, scrubbed that, tried to clean it. Did, tried not to do anything that would damage the the paint though. So that's why you still see it there. But the neck looks all nice and, and neat here on this new chassis. You just get a good look at the under chassis here as well. Has one chip key. That was I like that when I got it here. Oh, well, my camera just lost focus there. It did though, didn't it? Let's see if we can get it to focus back. Come on, focus. There you go. Um, you can see a little area here. This chassis, even though it's new old stock, it is old. You know, it's about 40 years old. So there's little, a few little dings and marks on it that uh, really just can't be helped. But I walk around back here. Squeeze through all my stuff here. <laughs> my camera's plugged in, so. But you can see the back of the chassis here, how clean it looks. That new socket looks really nice. I used a factory style socket, but I actually found one in black, which this would originally just been a, a uh, silver uh, jack. I found a black one that looks even better. So it kind of matches the chassis there. And uh, you can just see how nice everything looks across there. The power supply, once again, is y'all's power supply. Let me bring my look <laughs> here on around. 3278, seal number. I cleaned it up as well, so it looks good. And uh, of course, I left the strap on it that was on it when it came here. It's got a cool fallen star kind of thing on it there. But uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic uh, playing instrument now. I think you guys are going to be very happy with it. But uh, let me put the camera on the tripod here, and I will walk you through how this thing sounds. All right, so now I'm just going to go over it, let you guys hear this thing, how well it works. Uh, we'll start with the oscillator section, work away to the filter, etc. here, so you guys can just hear just how great this thing works. Uh, we'll start with both oscillators on, so you just can hear kind of a rough mix of how this thing sounds. A little aftertouch with uh, controlling the modulation of oscillators. <laughs> Oscillator as well as the polyphonic section. I'll just show you the polyphonic section works real quick. What's fun though is you can combine the oscillators with the monophonic section and it gets really cool. Now the polyphonic section is just note on off. There is no uh, contour or anything for it. It's kind of where it's like an organ. It's just a contact and then that's what you get. Um, so we'll start with oscillator one. You've heard both oscillators together. 
So here's oscillator one just by itself. Turn that glide off real quick. So you've got you've got uh, negative two octave, negative one, zero. Waveforms are sawtooth, triangle, as well as uh, pulse wave. Just like what you found on the, on the Prodigy. So that's oscillator one, it's pretty simple. Oscillator two, we've got uh, uh, this octave negative one on this one, it starts with negative one, so it's octave higher. Zero. And then plus one. Got the waveforms here, so you got the you got a, a sawtooth, which you're hearing, you got a triangular wave, and then we've actually got a square on this one. And then we got the interval control, which is very similar to the slider on the MG1, or is more laid out like a rogue here, as far as this knob, because it's actually a rotary uh, a rotary pot. But you can hear your octaves. you've got oscillator sync. So actually we'll go back to uh, square wave and triangular or, uh, uh, pulse wave here and we'll turn on oscillator sync and now we can actually sweep to the oscillator. So that's the oscillator section. Um, as you can see, they sound really good. Uh, we'll actually show the filter tracks the keyboard real quick. Try and tune that filter up just a little bit there against the oscillator one. And same thing here, we can put the four sensor or the wheel, you got a modulation wheel over here. We can put that on the filter. So I'll go over more modulation here in a minute. But we got the, uh, the modulation or we can just do a bend. Of course, we can also do the wheel, which is this little mod wheel over here. As you can see. So that's the filter in a uh, key tracking mode. We actually can do half tracking. And then we got tracking off. So we can turn tracking completely off the filter, just hold it one frequency, as you can see. And then we got the envelope generator. So I'll show you that the or the contour as well. It's some some sense called an envelope generator. Moog typically called it a contour generator. So I'll bring up the amount here. So it's this thing to zero. So we got. Uh, filter attack. We got uh, decay release. Bring it down frequency just a hair.
you can see how that works and we got the sustain as you can see in that you can use that in conjunction with the decay release to set how low you want it to go as you can see. So that's the uh, contour generator for the filter. Then we got the loudness contour. So let me turn the oscillators back up here. Open that filter back up. So now the loudness contour here, go down. Here. So set everything to zero. We just have just a click. I will start with attack. So you can see it goes to the attack and then drops out. We got the decay. So you can see we get it. You can get what's real poppy. And then we got the sustain. Once again, the sustain does the same thing as it does over here. We can turn our way down. You can see that we have just a key click. We can bring the sustain up. It'll set how low that decay actually goes. So you get these kind of percussive kind of stuff. And she's using aftertouch uh, controlling the pitch or the bend. So you can see how that works. So set all that back up. Combine the envelope with the filter here. Close that filter up. Put a slow attack on it. So that's combining the two contours together with the filter and the loudness. So to open that filter back up. So you've heard the oscillators, I'll show you the noise source works. You can hear how that works. And it is kind of a looping effect, it's because of the chip they use for the noise generator. We got the ring modulation. So that's the ring modulation, and then of course you've heard the polyphonic section. And just like on the uh, realistic, it goes to the filter, so we can... Now something I love to do with the, with the filter in the polyphonic section is actually put a sample and hold on it. And then we'll put that to the filter in the wheel. This is how great that works. It's just a really cool combination. 
Now something else I forgot to mention too about this control generator is we'll go back and turn everything off here. So I got the synth. You got this uh, release switch and this works kind of like the decay switch on the mini mode. So right now you can hear I have some sustain and I have some release. So if I turn this off, you can hear it has uh, just it goes straight to zero. So you get something like that right there. So that's the uh, controllers. You've heard a little bit of the modulation. We'll go to the modulation section now to show you how kind of this works. Um, also, let me show you too that the pitch ribbon works real quick. So we'll go here and go. See how great and accurate that pitch ribbon is now. Um, with the filter also, I keep forgetting stuff on this thing. You got this filter, uh, it actually is spring loaded and it actually lets you do little filter sweeps so with, your, with your finger so you can. You get these like. So you can do some really cool stuff with that little uh, little control there. Um, we got your force amount over here, which we can. Select between bend and modulation. And that's just using a square wave modulation there. And then you got auto trigger, so you can actually make this thing self trigger off the LFO. how that works and so this is really your modulation section you just got to rate your waveforms uh, triangular wave square wave and then of course sample and hold as you've already heard you can assign this to the force uh, which would or this is actually your force control right here pretty much they put it in the in the modulation section but you got your force or you can do the wheel and the reason they do that is because you have this control over here which you can either do a bend or uh, modulation and of course you got your mod wheel over here so you can assign it to the mod wheel so we can actually or you assign it to the to the force bar and you, of course you have your own amount on the force bar as you already saw so that's pretty much what this unit is now the glide circuit I'll show you this right quick because this is handy right here I'm glad they put a switch on it you got a uh, glide on off so you can actually have your glide set over here where you want it so you don't always have to bring the glide all the way to zero if you don't want glide uh, very similar to, to a mini moog um, so we can play it hit the glide switch And that's pretty much the synthesizer. Now what's also really cool about this synth too, I don't have it hooked up, but you can actually go CV out and this thing works as a controller. 
um, and it allows it actually sends the pitch. Uh, you can actually play the pitch ribbon here, and it'll send the CV of the pitch ribbon out. It's all through one jack, so you can't split it up, so it's not very modular friendly. But you can actually send everything through one CV source, which is pretty cool. Uh, even the aftertouch is sent out, so you can use this thing to control other Moog synthesizers such as mini Moogs, modulars, whatever you don't hook it to. So it's a it's a pretty cool system. But uh, anyways, just want to take a minute here and go over the unit uh, for you guys, show you that everything's functioning, and for you guys that uh, enjoy watching my videos, I really do appreciate it. And uh, there'll be more to come here very soon. Take care.